everybody, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, and I'm so glad you joined us in this series called The Acts of the Holy Spirit. In this series, I'm talking to you about the foundational teachings of the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. It wasn't just the Acts of God, it was also the Acts of His servants, the Acts of His children. And I believe God wants to do it again today through you and through your life. Today on episode 8, I want to talk about the lame man walking again. Because I believe it is a season called a beautiful gate. Let's go to Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms or to ask for donations. Charity to those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive donations from them. And Peter directed him to gaze at him, as did John, and said, look at us. I want to say this, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and no gold, but what I do have, I do give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. Wow, such authority. What was going through the mind of Peter? What was going through the mind of this apostle? Such an authority. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple, asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. Amen and amen. I love this story. And I love the stories that are just filled, peppered all throughout the book of Acts because it really shows how powerful, wonderful, our miracle work in Jesus is. Jesus is alive. He's not dead. He is still alive. Jesus. This miracle happened at the gate called beautiful. God is about to make all things beautiful in your life. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, in his time, he makes all things beautiful in his time. I believe God is about to beautify you. Whatever situation you're in, whatever deformity, infirmity, whatever you've been experiencing, God wants to beautify and he wants to anoint. He wants to transform and heal and make whole in your life. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. You see the story at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer, a lame man from birth was being carried and he was asking for donations. I believe there's so many people right now that are asking for help. Help me. Can you help me? Can you feed me? And in these days of trials and tribulations and more turmoil, there's going to be more needy people. There's going to be more people asking, needing help. Of course, we all need help. But are you lame since birth? You see, this man from birth was lame, was crippled, could not walk, could not move. He was in a deformity. He was disabled. Many people thought in those days that it was a curse. It was a product of their father's or mother's sin. It was a product of generational sin. That's why this man now is punished. They thought it was a form of karma in a sense. So here's this man, lame from birth. His identity is rejected. His identity is a low caste system. His identity is a nameless and a faceless. His identity is a nobody. He is known as unclean. He is known as untouchable. He is known as a nobody. And that's been his identity his whole life. But one moment changed everything. This day changed everything. Are you ready for the salvation of God? to embrace your life right here, right now. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of your favor. The beggar, the lame man, was begging his whole life. He was crippled his whole life and he was waiting for his whole life. But all of a sudden, one moment, one encounter, it shifted normality. It shifted 
business as usual. It shifted the mundane. It shifted the expected usual. The unusual took place. The notable miracle took place. The miracle working uh, hand of God was demonstrated and was extended. And what did Peter say? I love Peter's boldness. Peter directed the man, look at us. I believe sometimes you need to look away from your problem and you need to look at something different. The reason why some of you are still depressed, you're still oppressed. The reason why some of you are still in poverty is because you keep looking at your bank accounts. You keep looking at the insufficiency you have. We're not meant to look at ourselves. We're meant to look at Jesus. When we look at Jesus, we become like him. We will become whatever we behold. What are you looking at? Are you looking at yourself in shame and sin? Are you looking at yourself in a mirror filled with disgust, filled with disappointment, filled with anger, filled with bitterness and unforgiveness? But Peter said, look at us. God wants to change your view. God wants to change your perspective. God wants to change how you look at yourself. God wants to change what you are looking at. Hallelujah. God wants to change your view. Your vision is changing. Your vision is about to shift. Your vision is about to go from small to great. Your vision is about to go from failure to success. Your vision is about to go from being crippled to walking. Come on. God is about to give you 2020 vision. Peter said, look at us. Stop looking down. Stop looking at the dirt. Stop looking at your pain, at your problems. And that's the problem many Christians today. We keep looking at the wrong thing. We keep talking about the wrong things. We keep talking about sin and mess and, and we criticize and we mumble and grumble. And let me tell you, you're going to die off in a wilderness like the Israelites. What are you looking at? Oh, there were 12 spies, but out of 12, only two saw what God saw. The other 10 saw giants in the land. Oh, we were like little grasshoppers, grasshoppers before them. But only Joshua and Caleb saw the opportunity at hand. Hallelujah. God is saying, what do you see? Look at us. Look at Jesus. Look at the cross. Look up. Oh, where does my help come from? Oh, I will lift up my eyes. I will lift up my head. Where does my help come from? From the maker of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Peter commanded the crippled man, look at us. There was a pattern interrupt. Faith takes authority. The apostle Peter took authority. He, look at us. Stop it. Faith takes authority. And some people don't like authority. But it's of the Holy Ghost. Authority is spiritual. That's why when a man or woman of God speaks, he's taking authority over the atmosphere of unbelief, lack of faith, of sin, of issues, of which he's taking authority in Jesus' name. I have given you authority over snakes and scorpions to trample on demons. And the Bible here says, he took them, but I, excuse me, I have no silver and I have no gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his ankles and feet were made strong. Are you ready for immediate blessings? Are you ready for instant healing? Listen, I've seen some of the most notable, unusual miracles happen instantly. I've seen cancerous tumors instantly dissolved, healed. Metals dissolved. I've seen some instant, immediate miracles. Some things have taken progressive time, but I've seen instant, immediate blessings. Same day miracles, same day blessings. I've seen immediate. I declare it, lay hands, or we move by faith, and all of a sudden, in five minutes, boom, it happens. Amen. And I believe we are in the days of immediate miracles, immediate instant blessings. But we need to take authority. We need to walk by faith. And we need to have vision. Peter said, I have no silver, I have no gold, but what I do have, I give to you. Let me ask you, what do you have? Riches cannot, couldn't save this man. Gold and silver 
could have saved this man. Yeah, may, maybe the operations, maybe surgeries, maybe the hospital could have helped, could have saved, but there's some supernatural that God wants to give you. Do you have what it takes? In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Are you ready to rise up? Are you ready to walk? At this gate called beautiful, he made all things beautiful in this person's life who was identified as ugly, horrid, wretched, and rejected. At the gate beautiful, Jesus made this unclean man whole and beautiful in his sight. That's what the power of Jesus will do. You may not have silver, you may not have riches, you may not have gold, you may not have treasures, you may not have education, you may not have money, but as long as you have Jesus, that's all you need. Jesus is all we need. And let me tell you, the days are coming where there will be more shaking, where we cannot trust in our 401k plans, the money in our bank accounts. In fact, of course, the World Bank is trying to shut down all the banks. It's trying to control your money. As we even saw with COVID-19, if you don't get jabbed, then you can't work here. The devil is a liar. More and more, the enemy is going to try to shut things down. But God will open up at the beautiful gates if you have faith in Jesus Christ. Are you ready to rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ? I declare over you all the years of suffering and crippling will be over now. Any crippling spirit, any binding spirit, any paralyzing spirit will be broken off of you. And you will rise up and walk again in a new identity, as a new man, as a new woman, as a new creation. Look at us. Get ready for the beautiful gate to make you like Jesus. This miracle took place. And oh, the authority of Peter. Have faith and take authority, friends. You can change your situation. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here. I pray that this word blessed you. Let me know how you were blessed. This encouraged you. And I believe God is releasing faith for us to demonstrate the miraculous powers of Jesus.